During a kart race, Layla is having trouble concentrating and ends up losing, leaving her in tears. Racing is very important to her because her brother Asim used to race too, but he was in an accident that sent him to the hospital and now Layla feels the responsibility of winning for him. Her relationship with her parents has become distant since the accident, and whenever she needs encouragement, she touches the bracelet her brother gifted her. One morning, Layla is going for a run with her gym class when she comes across a student bullying another rather violently. Layla's friends tell her she shouldn't get involved, but when the bully insults her brother, Layla loses it and kicks the bully in the face. After class, her friend shows concern about Layla's mental stability and offers her support, but Layla wants to be left alone. In the evening, she decides to go to the amusement park to distract herself and forget about what happened. Meanwhile the news shows the kidnapping of a young man called Saul is current again 10 years later because a body has been found and there's a high chance it could be him. The next day, Layla wakes up to find her phone has no signal and the Wi-Fi is down, and when she comes downstairs, she discovers her whole family is gone as well. Desperate for answers, Layla hits the streets on her bicycle, but this turns out to be a citywide phenomenon and she can't find a single living soul. As soon as she makes it to the hospital, she confirms even Asim has disappeared. Not knowing what else to do, Layla keeps exploring the city asking for help and eventually she manages to find two kids, Terry and Camille, who have gone through exactly the same, their phones don't work and they haven't seen anybody else. Deciding to stick together for safety, the trio goes to the police station while unaware something is watching them from afar. Communications in the station are down too but they do manage to find a guy named Doji, who is in handcuffs. The trio releases him and tries to explain to him what they know so far, but Doji doesn't want anything to do with strangers and hotwires a bike to get away. After getting their hands on some bicycles and a gun from the police station, the trio keeps exploring the city, but it isn't until night falls that they finally find something. On a bank's building, someone wrote SOS using the window lights. The kids get into the elevator, which is stopped midway to allow a mysterious creepy voice to interrogate them to know their intentions, it also makes them drop their bags and the gun before allowing them to reach a floor and get out. The person behind the voice turns out to be Yvonne, the son of the bank's CEO. The group goes to the last floor to get a full view of the city, but there isn't movement anywhere. Yvonne also points out he doesn't remember going to bed last night, making the others realize they have the same issue. Afterward, they take a very fancy car from Yvonne's father's collection to keep on exploring faster, although the GPS doesn't have signal either. When they enter a tunnel, they're shocked to find Doji on the ground with a wound on his chest, someone had shot an arrow at him. Thankfully there's an ambulance stuck in the tunnel too and they put Doji inside to take him with them, which Yvonne doesn't approve of at first. However he quickly changes his mind when more arrows begin coming after them meaning whoever shot Doji is still around and ready to kill. Driving the ambulance at a very high speed, Layla takes the group to a fancy hotel, where she removes the arrow from Doji's chest. Afterward, the group decides to stay the night there and take advantage of its luxuries, although first they make sure to block the front door. Moments later, it is revealed that the presence that has been watching them it's a drone, the kids can't see it, but they do hear a weird noise outside the window and decide to share a room not to feel scared while they sleep. The next morning, while making breakfast in the hotel's kitchen, they find a newspaper with an article talking about a small leak at a nuclear plant just two kilometers away. A possible evacuation would explain the lack of people, although the article is from two weeks ago. Their chat is suddenly interrupted by Doji, who has finally woken up and come to grab a bite as well, but he refuses to answer the group's questions about what happened in the tunnel or to show gratitude to them for saving them. Yvonne finds this suspicious and Doji misunderstands it as an attack on his race, so he stomps out of the building to find another bike to get away. Layla and the others follow Doji in a car, but they can't even reach the edge of the city because they discover the entire area is surrounded by a mysterious hot fog that burns your throat if you get too close. When Camille accidentally drops her glasses, the fog melts them, and in Yvonne's opinion this proves some kind of chemical accident, meaning their family somehow left without them. Now that she doesn't have her glasses, Camille can't see anything, so they drive to her house to get a new pair. At first Yvonne doesn't want to join them and prefers to stay in the car to work on the radio, but soon it starts raining and he changes his mind. When he gets out of the car he accidentally hits the gear stick, and the vehicle slowly moves away without the kids noticing. Inside the apartment, Camille finds a spare pair of glasses, but it also finally sinks that her mother isn't around anymore, causing Camille to furiously start wrecking the place because it actually belongs to her stepfather. It isn't until Layla hugs her and offers her support that Camille calms down. Once they're done, the group discovers the car is gone, but thankfully Layla finds it inside a very dark tunnel. To her surprise, there are some noises coming from the radio, but the real shock comes from finding a masked man in the backseat. This is Blademaster, the guy responsible for the arrows, and now he has a knife that he intends to use on Layla. As soon as she sees him, she rushes out of the car and rejoins the group so they can run away together. A wrong turn takes them to a road blocked by a fence that they must climb, and during the process, Layla loses her beloved bracelet. Eventually they find a bus with the key still in it and they drive it all the way to the train station to take cover there. While Yvonne keeps trying to use the radio, 
Terry is looking at a video he took of their enemy and realizes he's dressed as the Blade Master from the Steelman cartoon. Outside, the drone continues to keep an eye on them. Suddenly, Layla realizes something. If Yvonne has access to everything in the bank, that includes the security vans, which should keep the group safe from Blade Master. They drive it all the way to the edge of the city, intending to go through the fog, but their plans are interrupted when someone finally contacts them through the radio. The voice is surprised there are people left in town after the evacuation and promises to send help in 24 hours, it also asks them not to go into the fog. The kids tell the rescuer they'll be waiting at the hotel and drive all the way back to spend the night celebrating the end of this mess with a toast that even prompts Doji to finally thank them for their rescue. When Layla goes to sleep, she dreams she's back in the hospital, hearing Asim calling her name and saying he's in pain. Just when she's about to reach his room, Layla is awakened by Yvonne, who thinks he saw something in the building and is afraid. He also reveals he's had a gun with him all along. Layla grabs the gun and goes to investigate only to confirm Yvonne is right, Blade Master is in the hotel too and is now coming after her. Without hesitation, Layla runs away and hides in the storage room, locking the door behind her and causing Blade Master to start stabbing the wood. He also begins shaking the door itself and Layla begins to wonder if she'll have to kill a person, but before she can react, Blade Master leaves and Doji finds her instead. The two of them run up to the balcony and see Blade Master running away from the building, so they agree not to tell the others not to worry them. In the meantime, the drone finds a sleeping Camille in her room. The next morning, while everyone relaxes, Doji leaves on his bike claiming there's something he needs to do, but he'll be back in two hours. Using a telescope, Terry notices the fog is coming closer, making Layla worry about Doji's safety and prompting her to go looking for him. Eventually she finds him inside a church leaving a letter at a little altar. As soon as Doji hears about the fog he agrees to return sooner than planned, but he also has a surprise for Layla. He's recovered her bracelet, a gesture that Layla finds very touching and inspires her to share her story. However before she can even say one word, they see some fireworks in the sky coming from the hotel, meaning the kids are in danger. Doji and Layla rush back to the hotel, where Terry and Yvonne explain they heard Camille scream. Her door is locked, so Doji forces it open with a fire extinguisher, but it's too late, Camille has disappeared. At that moment, the drone appears in the hallway and asks the group to follow it if they want to see Camille again. Driving the security van again, the group follows the drone to an abandoned building, where only Doji is allowed to enter. Layla doesn't like this idea, so Doji tells her she can come after him if he doesn't return in 10 minutes. Before he leaves, Layla gives him the gun and a tight hug. Doji goes inside and is welcomed by the drone, but 5 minutes pass and there is no news from him. Refusing to keep on waiting, Layla grabs a weapon from the security van and rushes inside before the 10 minutes are over. The building is an abandoned lab filled with trash from wall to wall, including Steelman comics on the floor. Unfortunately by the time Layla finds Doji it's too late, he's already been killed. Blade Master takes advantage of Layla's distraction to jump on her to kill her, but luckily Terry shows up and knocks him out with a quick hit to the head. Then, Layla removes the mask and discovers this isn't a man, it's a young neurodivergent boy called Remy. Moments later, after giving Doji a proper burial outside his church, the group ties Remy up and tries to make him confess Camille's location. Remy won't talk and this makes Layla furious, even prompting her to want to kill the guy, but Terry stops her just in time when he notices a sticker on Remy's clothes belonging to his mother's association that helps people with disabilities. Remy can't talk because he's mute, and there's no way a guy that depends so much on charity could have had the resources for this crazy plan. Layla accepts not to kill him, but she doesn't release him either. Afterward, Layla checks the letter Doji had left there earlier and discovers he had written it for his mom to apologize for shooting her husband. He wasn't evil, he had only wanted to scare him off because he hurt her. At that moment, a noise startles everyone, the radio gets in contact again to know why they left the hotel. The kids inform them they're in the church now and the voice starts laughing, calling him as gullible as Remy, who he refers to with a slur. It had always been the real Blade Master talking to them on the radio, which explains how he could always find them, and now he puts Camille on so they can hear her cry for help. Suddenly, an explosion goes off outside and destroys various sections of the church walls, allowing the fog to get inside. The kids release Remy and bring him with them into the security van, which they use to escape. Once they're far enough from the fog, they discuss where to go next while Yvonne handles the radio, but he can't make it work again. In the end, they park the van near a bridge and try to rest for a while before taking any decision. Layla dreams of the hospital again and Asim tells her to hurry, but before he can indicate exactly where to, he screams in pain and Layla wakes in tears, clinging to Terry for comfort. Moments later, the radio picks up some noises that sound like animals, which means Camille and the real Blade Master must be in the amusement park. As soon as they make it there, they sneak into the tent and confirm their guess is correct. Camille is there, locked inside a glass cage while wearing a long white dress. The real Blade Master is there as well and turns out to be Saul, who should be dead, he wants Camille to marry him and keeps referring to the members of the group with slurs. Remy still has the blades from the costume and wants to attack, but Saul sees him first and kills him with an arrow. 
Afterward, Saul explains to Camille how her friends will be caught by the fog and burn eternally in chaos in limbo before dropping the cage to make the group come out of their hiding spot. Saul isn't scared and comes face to face with Layla's weapon as he tells the story of a fire breaking out near the amusement park and asks her to wake up. Layla can't take his taunting and shoots him, but it just makes Saul laugh before he takes out a suspicious sheet of paper from his pocket. While Terry and Yvonne free Camille, Layla takes the paper with her to the amusement fair as she finally begins to remember what happened the night before it all began. While she had been having fun at the fair, she came across all the members of her current group, and the fire caught them there. It turns out all five of them plus Remy are actually dead, and the paper is a flyer announcing an event in memory of the victims. Terry and Yvonne come after her to warn her the fog is coming closer, but they freeze when they discover the truth as well. Realizing people can't die twice, Layla gets in a car and drives all the way back to the church to dig out Dodi, who effectively is perfectly fine. When he asks for an explanation, Layla loses it and begins laughing, mentioning how they're all dead and how they all probably are just part of her imagination before running away. As soon as she finds the fog, Layla lets her body fall into it and instantly becomes unconscious, so Doji picks her up and goes to find the others in order to think of a way to help her. While the group tries to locate some water to lower her very high body temperature, Layla dreams of the hospital once more. This time she manages to reunite with Asim, who tells her to cross the limbo and cross the fog. At that moment, she wakes up, thanks to her friends having found a lake and dipping her in it. The fog keeps coming closer, but Layla knows what to do now. The group goes back to the security van and after everyone puts on gas masks, Layla follows Asim's advice to enter the fog. For many long minutes, there's nothing but constant shaking and darkness, and the van doesn't stop until they come across a source of light. The kids have finally crossed limbo and reached heaven, which presents itself as a big open field with a huge building in the middle of it. Inside, the group finds hundreds of other souls cheering for their leader who turns out to Saul, and his presence makes the friends wonder if this is truly heaven after all. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.